Hello and welcome to Shooting Up North Indie Edition. I am your host, Lewis Carlin. Very, very excited today. I have a guy coming back to the show. He's been on the show a couple of times and um, always a pleasure talking to this guy. Very happy to welcome back the natural Nick Sullivan. Nick, welcome back to the show, my friend. Welcome to be back. How's it going? It's going good. How about you? How have you been? How, how, how have you been dealing with this uh, whole dumb, stupid pandemic thing? Uh I've been good since the pandemic, since probably late February, early March. I've been working from home for the time being. My wife's annoyed with me because I'm home every day. But <laughs> besides that, just working, she's working, uh, taking care of the dog, getting ready for the baby, okay. you know, just living a life. Okay. It's, weird, it's weird not wrestling, but also it's good taking a break so my body can recover, you know. But other than that, I've just been just trying to keep positive. I've been living my life the same since... Uh, crisis happened so nothing's really changed yeah. besides the wrestling aspect okay there you go well uh, this pandemic will be over soon i know they're working on yes. that vaccine and and we did discuss it i, I think me and you are both gonna take we'll that vaccine as line. soon as it's available you yep. i just see you suplexing people out of the way so you can I'll get be, that vaccine yeah i'll be first right in line so you mentioned you mentioned the baby coming. So congratulations, uh, first of Thank all. Thank you. New, 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 you're welcome. The new edition coming, uh, baby, uh, baby son. Uh, so you must be uh, absolutely excited that um, you're about to become a dad. Oh yes, as uh, you saw earlier, my uh, the mud room is my little action figure collection room, and you saw how many toys there are. So I'm uh, yeah, I'm well prepared. Yeah, I mean, your your wrestling figures. Uh, you you you, have, you said you have over a thousand wrestling figures. Yep. That's yep. that's insane, man. When when did you start collecting? When did you start collecting action uh, uh, these uh, wrestling figures? I started collecting when I was two uh, two years old. Okay. Um, and when I got into kindergarten, my grandfather told me he's like, hey, if you do good in school, I will buy you a wrestler. And when I when I was in kindergarten, all my drawings be of wrestlers and stuff like that. And we used to go to KB Toys, Toys R Us, and then as I got older, I stopped collecting. Then when my grandfather passed away when I was in college, uh, another way to help me remember and buy is I started collecting action figures again. Then collecting became <laughs> became an absolute okay. obsession. Um, we literally probably get 10 packages in with like every couple weeks of this stuff. Like I make sure okay. I, I'm updated on every action figure possible. But I don't buy doubles. <laughs> I, only, I only buy singles. And okay. I started. We got. I got the case in yesterday, and that's when I started setting everything up. And now I need more cases, and just a mess in that in that room. But no, I, I know you. Love it. you, you said, I know you sent me the message yesterday. You're like, look what's good. Look what's going on. I got all these figures. <laughs> I don't yeah. have enough cases. Uh, and I was like, my gosh, how many figure? How many action figures <laughs> does this guy have? Uh, right, so, uh, do, 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 do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite action figure? A uh, favorite uh, wrestling <laughs> figure that you got? Um, I have a couple rare figures. Like I have the Harley, Harley Race um, Elite Edition. I took a, Oh wow! I found certain ways to get that figure. I'm not gonna specify how, but um, <laughs> okay, that figure, okay, it, it we'll leave that alone. States or it was short packed, but I have my hands on that. And then uh, a couple other rare figures too. But that's okay. that's probably my my pride and joy. And I have the two. Uh, I have the Hulk Hogan Ultimate Warrior talking figures from like the night from like 1990 91 wow so yeah wow that's uh that that's incredible and i i won't press you on how you got the, the harley race figure uh that's so right. i won't i won't i won't i won't question that we'll we'll leave that one alone so so were you able to get them all in the cabinets or you, you still have to order more i'd order more cabinets okay you have to order more cabinets i still so have it's a, uh, it's, a, a it's an ex marble. it's an expensive expensive hobby you got there oh yeah uh, my, you know, my, my, my wife's well, like, hey, as long as they're out of the way, I, I don't care. I'm like, all right, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I have I have ten Funko Pop figures, and uh, my wife says it's 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 ten too many. And I'm thinking you have you have over a thousand, you know, over a thousand. So I I, I can imagine. Uh, oh, yeah. But they're all going to you're all going to your son anyway eventually, right? Oh yeah, most definitely. Yeah. So that's that's good. That's good. So. So um, the baby is due. I'm sure, yeah, I think it's due um, in November is what, what you had told me. Correct, yeah. So you must have tons of WWE uh, baby clothes uh, purchased already for, uh, I for literally, this. Uh, I literally bought everything I could, like WWE 
related in regards to baby clothes. Like a lot of her coworkers got mad because I bought everything ahead of time. But uh, <laughs> some of her coworkers were able to find some stuff I couldn't find, and which were uh, which was pretty cool. Yeah, I got like I try to find as much wrestling baby stuff as possible. I think I pretty much uh, okay. exhausted every wrestling baby item I could uh, thus far. <laughs> So you're 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 gonna you're I, I should say it's safe to say that um, your uh, your son is going to be a professional wrestling fan. I think it's safe to say that. Yes, my uh, my wife says uh, let him choose what he wants. I'm like sure. As long as he's a fan, as yeah. long as he's a fan, he can choose anything else he wants. As long as he's a fan of professional wrestling. Yep, exactly. All right. So 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 at what age do you do you show him how to German suplex somebody? Probably five. Start throwing, start throwing it off in kindergarten. <laughs> Get a call from school. Like, oh. You have this all planned down. Huh? You, oh, they, oh yeah. You, there were, there was no hesitation there. No five. I already got it all. I got it all planned out. When he, when he's five, he's gonna know how to German suplex somebody. Somebody. <laughs> That's uh, that's 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 good, man. It's like it was, that's hilarious, man. <laughs> I, I thought, I thought you were gonna say, oh no, no, I'm not gonna, but nope, five. He'll know he'll know how to do it when he's five. Oh, yeah. when he's five years old. <laughs> All right, let's let's switch gears here a little bit. Uh, I know with the pandemic there were no shows on. Now uh, we, as you mentioned, uh, some shows are happening. Do yep. you have any upcoming shows? Uh, anybody, any promotions calling you about? Um, oh no, no. Um, I know you and I talked uh, probably a month ago when I when I had that uh, that super little eye injury. I don't okay. know if you remember yeah. you and know, I discussing that when I had that uh when I had like a burning sensation in my right eye and it ended up being a metal fragment from the drill when I was drilling our closet in. Okay. So okay. Been taking, that's another reason I've been taking time off just to let my eye heal. I've glasses out, I've been using eye drops, like steroidal eye drops, the way for everything to clear up, but like I see all the wrestling going on right now, I watch it. Like I've had some promoters contact me. Um I'm just you know, I'm going to be a new father. I'd rather personally wait till next year and just start fresh. Okay. You know, like with me, when it comes to roughs, I know a lot of guys will take time off. They're not sure if they'll still have it. I honestly got to believe it'll just, I'll just go back in and just start off like usual. I take it just like, I just take huh? it just like pre song Greco amateur wrestling. Just go in, go deep diving right in, right after taking a break. So I'm very, I'm very confident. All right, man. I won't lose anything right when I come back. I'll just start, start as normal. Yeah, no, that that was that was gonna be one of my questions coming on. I was like, with the time off, the because I know you 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 started um getting booked up here in in Canada, and you were making a started to make a name for yourself up here. And I was wondering if you thought maybe you you would have to start all over again, but you don't think you're you're gonna have to start all over again. You think you're just gonna pick up right where you left off? Yes. All right, cool. I, yeah, I very determined. So no, no, no argument here, man. I know, uh, I know the talent you have, and um, thank you. You'll, you'll just jump right back in. And um, next question is, I, I mentioned German suplex. How badly do you want to German suplex somebody right now in in the ring? I'm sure it's oh, it's like you're you're itching just to grab somebody just a German in the suplex. Ring, probably in public. <laughs> probably in public, honestly. <laughs> like. I have such a tall, like I have such a short span for people. Uh, I try to be like, I'm a, I'm a respectful guy, you know. And but you meet you meet like the rudest people in society nowadays, and it's like a party you want to beat them up, but party was like, no, all right, no, you'll get a lawsuit. So <laughs> I'm trying to be as respectful as possible, you know. But there's some people that you just see in general, it's like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you, you know what I mean? But again, to a lot of people now in today's society, this is rude. Rather be wrestling or in, or just in life in general, but <laughs> I can't wait to go back in the ring and start throwing people around. I'm, I've been I've been itching at it. Trust me. Okay, no, I'm I'm trying. I can see you. I can see I can see you walking down the street and, and going. You know, I could probably German suplex that guy right now. And you attempt to do, just tempt, <laughs> just to grab him and just to do it real quick, just to get it out of your system. So. <laughs> But, but no, you'll be you'll be suplexing people um, before you know it, man. Yeah. You know it. So so as this pandemic's been going on, have you have you have you been watching much wrestling? Are you oh, watching yeah. Impact? All, yeah. What what do, what, do you, what, do you, what are you watching right now? What, what's your um? Um, I still watch like we you and I we always talk about New Japan. 
I still watch the, the yep. independent stuff that's shown right now to see how, because I, I have a certain number of friends that are currently wrestling right now, see how they're doing, um, see how their promotions are doing, how they do the protocols. So watching WWE, obviously Impact, AEW, just seeing how everything's going on with that. I see Ring of Honor just started something. Keep an eye on that because obviously those are my all all those are my goal promotions. You know, whoever grabs me first, I I will go there. You know, just make a name for myself and yep. do the best of my ability and just go above and beyond expectations. But no, I've been keeping uh keeping an eye on everything. Yeah, just so you hear that impact wrestling, whoever grabs the natural Nick Sullivan first gets him. So uh, Scott Demore, Don Callis, don't blow it. You be the first. Be the yeah. first and grab grab Nick Sullivan. Um, I would uh, like I said, I would love to see you in Impact Wrestling, and I know we talk about that a lot. Oh yeah. And um, uh, so speaking of Impact Wrestling, they're they're doing their show still in front of uh, no crowd. There's there's zero per- people in the audience. How 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 do you feel about that? Is that something uh, you'd be able to do to wrestle in front of uh, in front of nobody, or do you need that crowd to uh, to feed the energy off of? Oh yeah, well with me, like I have a vivid imagination, so even even when I would do the even when it came to training practice, even when it came to certain shows, whether it be the doesn't matter the crowd size, I always envision like the main promoters or like the owners of the companies just watching me. And this that's that's it's like a whole visual visual visualization aspect. Like I'm I've a I try to imagine that that just the crowd's cheering for me. I just try to go with the groove, basically. And I think it's smart the impact still doing with no fans. It's so exciting. I know a lot of people they have their opinion, whether it be fans or no fans, but they're taking the proper protocols and procedures and I still think they're putting on putting on very great shows. I don't get why people oh, yeah. shit on them all the time. I I don't get it, but I think I think they're one of the best wrestling companies around. They've been around since what Absolutely. 2002. They have many yeah. older changes, but you know what? They're still they're still ticking. Absolutely, man. And and I know uh, you know I um I, I shoot after people that uh, put down Impact Wrestling. You I, you've you've, oh, you've seen sorry, my comments. And I so talk about I laugh. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't let them get away with that. I don't let them yeah. get away with that. Um, huge Impact Wrestling fan, and uh, so, so, what are your thoughts on their recent signings? Actually, with the Good Brothers and Eric Young coming back, and and Brian Myers. Uh, what are what are your thoughts? They're all, all four of them are very great talent. All four of them have been wrestling for a very, very lo- longer than I have. I'm glad, I'm glad that Eric Young got the opportunity. <clears throat> um, I know a lot of people. Like you and I both said, like they they noted him as a jobber, which I don't understand why. Because when WWE, he was doing very well. Then who know? I I personally don't know what happened. I don't know what happens, but he's an impact becomes world champion. He seems to be doing something right. Same thing with the Good Brothers, Brian Myers. Like these these guys are talented dudes. They know how to work. They know how to work the WWE style, the independent style. Impact wrestling style, like they know how to work certain styles to engage the crowd and put on great matches. And I, I'm I'm glad they're there, you know. And like, I think that'll be a good opportunity too, especially with Impact Wrestling. Like, they have a good niche with uh, New Japan Wrestling, so it's a really great core of talent that they all work together. And yeah, uh, no, the- that's why I'm, I'm hoping to work with all four of those guys in the future. Absolutely, the Good Brothers. There, uh, they 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 openly said that they want to. Um, mend the uh, mend the fences between. Um, is is that the right saying? Mend the fences. I, I, think. I believe so, but that, I think <laughs> that's correct. I'm not sure. If they but they they want to repair the the relationship. There you go. They want to repair the relationship with uh, with the uh, impact in New Japan Wrestling. And they said that you know because their contract, as you know, says that they can work in New Japan, which they're going to they're going to do. Or they were already signed by. Repair the relationship. Do you th- do you think it could be done? Do you think? Um, New Japan and Impact work together, or do you think they'll stay with uh, with Ring of Honor? No, I think I think like I know it's different when it comes to, like WWE and like AEW because of the way they run things differently. But I think Impact and Ring of Honor and New and New Japan, I think they all work together without any issues, including like AAA as well. I know they all worked. I know a lot of these guys done shows like that in the past where they all work together. I wouldn't see why not. My thing is about putting on good wrestling for the fans without any drama but wherever you go there's always gonna be some type of drama 
as long as you can take it accordingly and don't let it phase you, then I think there should be an issue. But again, until I'm not a promoter either, so. Okay. Yeah, no, I think they could work something out. I mean, I know everyone's saying that they're still upset about the way uh, Impact Wrestling uh, handled Kazuchika Okada, but that was like, what, 10 years ago? I don't yeah, think they're going to you know, hold a grudge like for 10 years. Owners, you know, like the one owner back when, you hear all these, you hear all these stories a lot. Certain stories I'm not going to specify on, but you hear all these crazy stories. But now, and it sucks though too because because of the prior owner and or owners that Impact still has a bad rap. But Don Callis and Scott Demore, they've done so well for their, I'm not sure, for the, like the past what, five, six years maybe, maybe longer, but they've been doing yeah. very well handling the company. They always put on good matches. They always have good wrestlers, good talent, good shows. So, again, just ignore the past and focus on the future. That's why I laugh Absolutely, when, man. You, when fans put down impact and you're like, nah, fuck that. Yeah, but no, again, no, no just, people, yeah, try, try again, try again. Yeah, a lot of people are fans too, so they don't know what a lot of us have to go through or deal with. Because yeah. wrestling fans, man, a lot of them are very what? petty, as you know. Oh, yeah. A lot of these people that put down Impact aren't even watching Impact, but they just say, see a clip and they're like, oh, this is why I don't watch Impact. Exactly. Like, well, you don't watch, you don't watch Impact, so, so stop with the, with the crap. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, I let them have it on my Impact show as well. So I, uh, uh, but, but anyway, um, PWI uh, Top 500 was, was released, I think, like a month ago. Is, is, that a, is that a goal of yours to get on the, the, the PWI Top 500? My thing is, if I'm on it, I'm – if I'm on it, I am. If I'm not, I'm not. I know the talent I have. People okay. have their opinions of me. You know, I, I know what I'm worth. I know how good I am. I know that I could be even, I could exceed expectations. I know that I'm a, a fantastic wrestler. I'm not sounding cocky. And a lot of people think it is very being very cocky. This is, I know that I work very hard. I'm not going to let anybody stop me. Whether people want to put me on the ranking system or not, I could, I could care less. Just I know what I'm worth, okay. and I know how hard I work and train. Okay, fair enough. I, I, you don't have to convince me, man. I, 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 I know the talent. I know the Thank talent you. that I'm talking to right now, man. You're welcome, man. So, do you do you think John Moxley should have been number one? He was uh, the number one on that list. It it was kind of like a no brainer because it's always because you figure AEW is a brand new promotion. They're pretty hot right now. And the they sag a lot of WWE guys, and John Moxley was besides a couple other guys, but John Moxley was our biggest talent, and he's right in the world title picture. Um, it was it, again, yeah, it was a no-brainer that he was to be the number one. Like I, I always watched him in WWE. I watched him in CCW. I still watch him today. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, more power to him, you know. <clears throat> All right, man. All right, you okay? You sound like you got a little, you got the, a little, uh, a little cough there, man. You, you oh, yeah, okay? <laughs> All right. Man. Uh, do you want to get some water or something? Or do you, oh, no, are no. You, I'm good. Okay, man. There you go. All right. So I have. I, I hope this is okay. I have eight names here. I got uh, four uh, current wrestlers and four legends, and okay. uh, I like to. I like to name each one right now, and maybe you could tell me how a match between the the wrestlers I'm about to name uh, versus Nick Sullivan will play out. Is is that all right, cool? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So, uh, all right. First one, Nick Sullivan versus uh, Jacob Fatu. Oh, Jacob Fatu. Um, oh, probably be this a big, a big man contest. A lot of chops. A lot of a lot of stiff shots. A lot of big man moves. Um, it'll just be uh, a lot of a lot of slams. They'll probably have to reinforce the ring. Okay. All right, man. All right, there you go. So, uh, second name would be uh, Tomohiro Ishii. Oof. That's now, first question. First question to you. Do you think you could take a chop to the throat uh, by uh, – we'll, we'll leave that as the only question uh, for this. Do you think you could take a chop to the throat by Tomohiro Ishii? I probably have no choice. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love his work. Just um, he does look like a uh, – he does look like a pit bull. Um, he's someone that could definitely bring me to the next level. Because he's not he, obviously he's someone that's not afraid to to legit strike you. And I feel like like what what comes to his style, it's a test. Like he'll t I feel like he tests his wrestlers to see to see how tough they are. You know, 
Um, he was he's definitely yeah. someone that I could definitely see going back and forth. Like I'm not, I'm not a bitch. Like I'll I'll take I'll take it all. Punch me in the face, I'll punch him right back. Just as long just as long as the end of the match, he he respects me because I, I have a ton of respect okay. for him. Okay, man. All right. And I don't think anybody thinks you're a bitch. Trust me. Oh, okay. yeah. Nobody would dare. Nobody would dare say that to to, to you, especially <laughs> much less behind, much less to your face, but behind you, behind your back. I think people will still be scared to, yeah, to say that about, about you. As well. It is what it is. <laughs> uh, Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy. Huh? Orange Cassidy. I shared the locker room many times with him. Um, he's. Uh, I don't know. A lot of people have their opinion of him. He's a very nice guy. Um, our styles, me personally, I don't think our styles would match because I probably, I personally probably would get really mad. I, I, I respect what he does, like this, the shit he's huh. doing, right okay. like with the pockets. I don't really like, I personally can't do it. Like, I respect what he does, but uh, probably a lot of, probably a lot of physical, physicality. Like he okay. would legit have to do what he can to really bump me, because I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna crumble. You know what I mean? Like if, he, if he's gonna, sure. if he's gonna go for a Superman punch or, or go for his move he, he better, he better go 100 miles an hour and try to, he better kick me as hard as he can, because I'm gonna have him flying across okay. the ring. Okay. And a last one for the current wrestlers, and I'm gonna get to the, the legends. Uh, Lance Archer. Another, another guy that I have a lot of respect for. Again, that. I hope he recovers fully from um, COVID. I know his family has that, so uh, he's someone that I like watching. He he reminds me of this. He's a big man. He reminds me like the style of like Kane, Kevin Nash. Um, he's very for, for his size. He's very fluent in the ring. Someone with him, since he's a lot bigger and taller than me, I have to attack the legs. I have to break him down, break him down like a tree. Take his legs, attack his legs. I I would have to change my style and work very technical with okay. him to break him down. Okay. All right, so let's get to the legends. First first legend is Andre the Giant, and do you think you could German suplex Andre the Giant? I don't know if I get my arms around him. <laughs> um, <laughs> Andre the Giant, um, that was my mom's favorite wrestler growing up, actually. My mom told me okay. that she wanted to marry him. Um, would someone okay. like him? I know Andre, he would, he would respect you if he worked very hard. Um, I know that you hear stories about him. Like if he didn't like you, he would be very. He would take it out on you. I'll do whatever I can, but it's like, how do I work with somebody like that? His size and his his lineage would probably throw me around the ring like a doll. Um, I'll take it though. Um, but I'll be work with someone like him. It'd be an honor, especially young Andre. Especially his agility, him doing drop kicks, uh, pedigrees, doing back back suplexes across the ring. Um, all right, second name on the list, man. What about uh, Harley Race? I know you mentioned you have a figure, or it was your favorite figure of Harley Race. Uh, so how would a match between Nick Sullivan and Harley Race play out? More likely a blood fest. I have to watch out for his uh, headbots. <clears throat> Hopefully he doesn't piss him with me. Um, he's another guy. I loved watching a match with him him and Ric Flair at Starcade for the world title. Just Harley. Yeah. He's another respected old-school wrestler that uh, he'll, he would – he would grind and brutally beat the young guys just to, just to show them, like, hey, like, get in the pro wrestling. This ain't no, this ain't no slouch sport. Uh, he's someone I would love to – obviously, if this was, like, in the future, I would love to wrestle him in his prime just because, again, too, someone like him, he can teach you so much stuff on the road, this breakdown when it comes to certain matches. Just him and I would just be a blood fest. Absolutely. I think that would be a tremendous match you against uh, Harley Race. Yeah. Um, now, just back to Andre the Giant for a second. Do you, do you think uh, do you think Andre the Giant would like you? Because I know it's you either on his good list or his bad list. Uh, which which list do you think you would be on with Andre the Giant, or, or you would have no idea? I think I'll be on his good list. Like yeah, when it comes yeah. to legends, I re- I respect all I f- respect all these guys from yesteryear. Just because I grew up, I grew up watching a lot of these guys when I was little, watching tapes and studying tapes. But I'd have nothing but respect for them. So yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm sure. I mean, I know. I don't know if you heard the story about. Uh, if you did, you see, did you see the uh, the Andre the Giant uh, documentary? Yes. Did you watch? It? Yeah, when John Studd, you know, was stepping over the top rope, and Andre said that, "Don't do that. That's my thing." Yep. But John Studd didn't listen to him, and Andre almost killed him in the ring. 
<laughs> and like the one thing too is I never realized how big John Stout was. So actually seeing him, like, oh, he's yeah. a, he is a big dude. Because <clears throat> I think he was like what, like six nine, six ten maybe. Uh, I think he, I think he was six ten. I think I read okay. he was six ten, six nine, six ten. Yeah, he was, he was a big boy. I know but, this uh, looks just like him that's currently wrestling. Yeah, yeah, uh, but uh, this, I guess Andre didn't like him stepping over the top rope and. He got, he got on Andre's when once you get on the bad list, apparently you never got off. So yeah, uh, with Andre the Giant. Um, about uh, Mr. USA Tony Atlas uh, versus Nick Sullivan. Oh God, do, do, I have a guy. You think he video. could think he'd be able to? Do you think he could press you over his head? Probably could. He probably could still do it right now. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you right yeah. now, with Tony Atlas. Um, with his charisma and his wrestling ability, I think it'll be a very interesting match because he was somebody that. Like he's built like an ox, but he was very, he's very agile in the ring for someone his size. I remember, I remember like the obviously the Dublin Mysterious USA Tony Atlas, uh, Black Superman. Just he was someone that was ahead of his time, I believe. Him and uh, for example, his tag team partner of the Rock's Ad, Soul Man Rocky Johnson, because back then besides like Hulk Hogan, those guys had a lot of charisma, and even someone for his name, his uh. Age right now, but I think he's 65, 66 years old. He's still in tremendous shape. Yeah. I know he he uh, faced a lot of uh, a lot of hardship, but he's always you can see he's always been very positive, very respectful towards people. I I would just love to get a chance to meet him and pick his brain. Yeah, no, I would love to meet. Him. I remember, remember when I was a kid, he uh, he got into a, a feud with with Hulk Hogan, and I remember I was watching. Uh, the show where where it happened, uh, Atlas was out. Uh, Hogan came out and and Hogan attacked him. And uh, Atlas came back, did his little comeback. But then when Hogan uh, took over and and um, and uh, took him out, and I was so angry at Hulk Hogan. I just I wanted Tony Atlas to kill. Him. I was I was thinking about diving through the. If I could dive through the TV screen to help Tony Atlas, I I would have done that. But um, but apparently, but I didn't see the match. But I, at MSG, he actually. Gorilla pressed him over his head, Hulk Hogan over his head, and and he actually uh he won the he defeated Hulk Hogan. Um, I think that match is on YouTube. Uh, is that, that match Hogan, or the one at the Meadowlands Arena? Is that when Hogan was with uh, Fred Blassie? That's when he's with Fred Blassie. Yeah, okay. that's when he uh he was a heel uh, with Fred Blassie and uh, he feuded with Tony Atlas. And he I think he feuded with Tony Atlas right before he feuded with Andre the Giant. And okay. um, but uh, yeah, no, he was. Tony Atlas, man, I uh, and like you said, you still see him now. His his arms, I think, are still the same size as they were when he was back in 1980. Man, oh, yeah, still, ask, uh, ask uh, Mr. Man about him because Mr. Man shared uh many shows and the guy had a chance to hang out with him and stuff. Okay, okay. Mr. Man has yeah, I was. About him. All right, cool, man. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about Mr. Man um uh, shortly. I have a question I want to ask you about him. Okay. Uh, but uh, last uh, last guy, last guy, the Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh my God. Ooh, yeah. Uh, Macho Man, still to this day, is one of my favorite wrestlers because he's so flashy and charismatic. But but when he's in the ring, he flips a switch. It's if you think about his move set, is basically punches, double axe handles. Scoop slams, just he's a brawler, but he's so charis he's so charismatic that you think he's probably the greatest wrestler ever. But what help? But but the thing is, he has that character, and that character he brought into real life. Um, I probably, God, I probably a nervous wreck. Like had a chance to work with someone like him, but I definitely would love to work. With, I would have loved to work with someone like Macho Man Randy Savage because he was one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. And just just oh, yeah. sitting down picking his brain too. Oh my god. Yeah, definitely, he's definitely. Always, without uh, that one, of, he was always a cream of the crop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. One of one of the greatest of all time. One yep. of the greatest of all time, without a doubt. Okay, so yeah, so yeah, that's that's the last uh, person on the list. But um, uh, you mentioned Mr. Man, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask you how how do you feel that uh, Mr. Man has uh, stepped away from pro wrestling? It seems like he's retired. Uh, so what's uh, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Um, I knew I knew about it before he officially announced it. Um, I know him and I talked about it prior that hopefully when wrestling returns and goes back to somewhat normal uh, for the Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame shows, hopefully when they able when they're able to return, 
I told him I would still like them from like to come out of retirement and like to, to have him work with me. He's someone that always saw something in me. When I like I said before, when we first when him and I first met, I always pick his brain, have him watch my match because he's been a, he's been around for a very long time. Um, he's got to see the best wrestlers, best of the best work. And I always have him like, hey, can you watch my match? Let me know what I need to work on, what I need to do, my mannerisms, etc. And even though he only got the management, I think maybe like four or five matches, he definitely w- was able to help me reach that next level. Because he even said, like, I had that talent, but I just needed to flip the switch. And I did. And he was someone that made me feel comfortable when it came to engaging in a crowd while working on my opponent, etc. Just, just feel comfortable in the ring in general. But he's definitely someone that uh, I have a lot of respect for. And I wish him nothing but the best. And he's someone that I'm that I truly consider a very, very dear friend of mine. And this, I have nothing negative to say about that man. Okay. Fair enough. Me, well, me neither. I know you, I've had him on the show once and yeah, very, know. very, very good guy to speak to. Yes. And, uh, I wish him nothing but the best of luck and, um, pro wrestling, uh, pro wrestling, uh, lost a great manager and Mr. Man. And hopefully he'll come back, like you said, for, for a few, um, for a few shows, but, uh, yeah, thanks. And when it's somewhat, no managers. Time to, yeah, I was going to say, sorry. I was going to say there's no managers like him. There's obviously Father Derek, who manages me currently, but those are only two I can see that have that old-school mentality when it comes to managers, both Mr. Man and Father Derek, who I always have read, watch my matches, help me when it comes to match breakdown, etc. So I went from one one good manager to another good manager. So I was in, I'm in good hands when it comes to both of these guys. All right, man. So, so what do you think? Um, I know he was managing um, uh, Blaze Haram. What, what's your thoughts on Blaze Haram? And when are you going to get a hold of that guy and suplex the living crap out of that that, that clown? Because uh, he deserves a few uh, German suplexes, uh, Blaze Haram. He does, he's got a big mouth, that guy. I'll probably beat the shit off him eventually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, his character is very unique. Uh, some people, again, too, I think people become too fixated. But again, too, that means he's doing what he's doing correctly when it comes to his character. Um, his character is obviously yeah. a lot of people take that uh, not so uh, not so well. It's one of those uh, one of those characters that people feel like, oh, it can't work in today's world, blah blah blah. But you know what? He's he's getting he's engaging the crowd. People, some people, some people believe in it, you know. And uh, hey, more power to him. He's just like um, like yeah, I mentioned no. before. A mentor of mine, Ben Hameen. He does a lot of work in Canada and stuff too. He worked in OVW. His his character is a uh, Iraqi sympathizer, and he's been doing that for 10, 12 years. And when I yeah. see when I first watched him, when I first started wrestling, this guy this guy can literally cause a riot, a riot which he has. He gets people, okay. especially war vet, especially war veterans, like pissed off to the core where they want to like legit fight the man. I love it. Okay. Cause yep. it, I, lo- I love, sorry to backtrack, but I love getting the crowd, especially as a heel, pissed off. If I'm a good guy, I'll still get people pissed off. I don't care because I like I love pushing buttons because because yeah. fans, like, like, yeah, they pay the ticket to to watch and cheer and boo or whoever they want. But a lot of these guys, man, they talk a lot of shit. But then when they have the barricades, like, like I don't know, I can really kick the shit out of you and break your jaw. But <laughs> I, lo- I love personally, I yeah. love engaging the crowd and I, lo- I love getting the crowd mad because I, I know I'm doing my job. Yeah, so uh, oh, back to Blaze, the, the Blaze Haram. I, I, I'm just kidding. Actually, I, I, I know him well. He's actually, uh, uh, I, I've never admitted this before, um, and but I'm going to say he's actually a, a, a really good friend of mine. And uh, what he does uh, is fantastic. He plays that character so well. And uh, I mean, he's been banned from Facebook a number of times because people are complaining about him. Uh, but he does a great job. Uh, so oh, no, um, I it's so stupid. At the same time, actually, when I first saw him do one of his very first promos, I'm like, dude, how the hell did you do that? And he was showing me how to do. It. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. But uh, he, yeah. he he works he works very hard. And like when I first met him, um, obviously he went to Mr. Man too, and, and like he was telling me his story about everything that happened when it came to training and stuff like that. I'm like. I'm like damn dude, like he he legit got like the shit out of the stick when it came to his prior trading, but 
now he's at a good place and now he's in good hands. So he definitely he definitely improved. Because when we all started wrestling, like we all get those jitters and stuff like that. But as time goes on, you get more comfortable in the ring, you improve, and it just it's just very fluid. And Mr. Man was another person that helped him out a great deal, be very comfortable with their with yep. this character come out of his shell. All right, cool man, cool man. So, so in in your in your in your first match back, um, and I'm sure it's gonna happen very soon. Do you have an opponent that you want to face, or 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 it doesn't matter? Just, just you want to be it? It can be anybody. Um, actually, you know me, I'm very picky. I want to work with the best. Okay. Because I feel like that's more that's how again that's how you get recognized, and that's how that's how you get become a better wrestler. I feel like you train as much as possible, but when it comes to, when it came to me personally, as we you and I spoke before, as I started wrestling better opponents and better wrestlers, I started to do more things and certain things more because more guys are comfortable work with me. Uh, when I first started, I was booked as a monster, literally doing two minute squash squash matches for a year. Did it help me out? No, not really. Yeah, it got me to oh, be a monster, blah, blah, blah. But when I started wrestling um, Terrell Kenneth, my tag partner, when we first wrestled for Kiss for Canines in Canada, I think 2018 maybe, that's when I was able okay. to he helped me engage my character more. He let me do stuff that I know I can do, and he, he felt very comfortable that I could take care of him. And then again, too, we became a tag team. So there's certain guys that yeah you got oh you're gonna say sorry no no I was gonna just ask you, you guys uh, still uh, gonna team together in the future I know you guys are a great oh, yeah, the natural destroyers oh yeah most definitely you know me I'll do tag cool. team and singles right. but like, he's definitely someone that that I have a lot of respect for and definitely helped me out and he's someone that he's never greedy he's a very like, good genuine dude like he tries very hard and I'm glad like I have someone that has the same goals like all I have. To be a, to have a tag part, as a tag team partner. All right. So, and uh, you mentioned Canada earlier. Uh, we talked about Canada. Um, uh, what what promotions do you uh, would you like to work with in Canada? I know there's um, uh, you got C4, uh, you have Destiny, uh, Smash Wrestling, uh, you have Kaizen Pro Wrestling uh, out in the Maritimes. Yep. Uh, great great new promotion. What is there a promotion uh, that you would like to work for, or do you want to work for all of them? Um, all which, of them. Uh, which promotions? <laughs> okay, there you go. There you go. All of them. Okay. Um, uh, my goal is to work for the top tier promotions in Canada. Okay. Um, every honestly, every one of them. There, there's at least obviously I've been I did stuff with C4. Um, obviously you know there's a uh, Seaway Valley. That's uh that's another oh, big yeah, one. Oh yeah, Seaway Valley. Um, you know how can uh, I how I, I I was gonna get upset with me because I forgot to mention uh C Seaway Valley. I I apologize. I know Al's gonna be listening, so I uh, I apologize, Al. I forgot to mention uh Seaway Valley <laughs> Wrestling. So I'll ask the question uh just so Al doesn't get angry. Uh, uh Nick, do you do you want to work for Seaway Valley Wrestling? Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Okay. Well, okay. Like I was, I mean, I I'm not sure if I had a chance to meet Al yet personally, but obviously I know Ryan pretty well. But um, I talked to okay. Al and I talked to Ryan, and they're both obviously they're both very good dudes. Just like I said before, when it comes to the Canadian independent and big time wrestling in Canada, uh, as you know, all the shows from the pre-show match to the main event, the crowd gets very engaged. <clears throat> um, all the wrestlers oh, yeah. are either signed or the top tier independent talent, and that's why when I had the opportunity to debut at C4. And I took that and ran with that. I, the game that I bought, I ran with it. And especially, especially how passionate the the Canadian fans are, the rest of the crowds, especially having your peers recognize, like, yo, man, good job. Um, this Everyone's very positive. You don't see, especially being in the locker room, there's no drama. This, everyone wants to work hard to have great matches. And I, I can't wait to be back. Yeah, yeah. I, I know they're easing, uh, uh e they're easing border restrictions now. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll be back Thanks. soon. And when, and when yeah. you come out to, uh, have you been, um, oh, Jew, I forgot the name of the, uh, shoot, I forgot the name of the promotion uh, out of Kitchener. Um, 
Oh my god. Um, my gosh. It's uh, owned uh, by Ben. Big Ben uh, runs it. Um, ben Ben Ortman uh, runs the promotion. Shoot, I, I why did I forget the name of the promotion? I think I think you were on one of the shows. Um, does does Ben Ortman the name sound familiar to you? Um. Uh, was oh my cross gosh! Body. I can't believe I can't believe. Oh, crossbody, crossbody, cross crossbody. Yeah. My gosh, how could I forget that crossbody? Yeah. yeah. That, um, I haven't had the opportunity to wrestle there, but um, I would love to. That's another. That's another big promotion that I like to work for. I know. Um, I know they put on obviously very great shows there too as well. I like to work for like a Carl the Duke's promotion. Um, I like to work for many promotion the IWS. I watch, okay. I watch all that stuff just to study it and see how the crowd reacts. I, trust okay. I, keep my, uh, I keep my eyes and ears open. Gosh, I, I can't believe I forgot Crossbody. I, I, I'm a big fan of Crossbody. I've seen a number of shows. Uh, just the, the name escaped me, and I, I hope um, I hope uh, Big Ben uh, Ortmans doesn't uh, hit me with a clothesline when he sees me. <laughs> see, I, I, I get Commissioner Al upset. I'm getting uh, Ben upset. I'm just pissing people off uh, during, this, during this interview. So, <laughs> <laughs> so last question, and then I'll let you plug anything you want to plug. Um, you said you've been watching New Japan Pro Wrestling. Who's your pick to win uh, the G1? Oh God, it's so it's so hard to choose. Just because the talent's so strong there. Yeah. It's it's really hard to ju- it's really hard to choose. Well, my my pick is Kota Obushi again uh, for the second year in a row. Uh, that's that's who I'm thinking. I think now I'm very surprised he didn't go to AEW. But again, I'm glad he's I'm glad he's at where he's at. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's made the smart move. I mean, I, why, why go to? I mean, look at, uh, um, well, I don't really watch much of uh, AEW, but I heard Kenny Omega is not the same Kenny Omega in AEW as he was in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Is that is that true or? Sadly, or, um, I can attest to that. Um, his okay. his uh, his matches are very different compared to New Japan. I know. I think he said in an interview like he don't want to be greedy or something, but it's like a guy with his talent. Especially stuff he did in New Japan, I'm like, he had to be greedy. Um, there's a story. Yeah. Sorry, the backer, but there's a story where when it came to Brock Lesnar, the Rock told Brock when the Rock when the Rock was passing towards Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam 2000, 2002 for the uh, the undisputed title that he told Brock he had to be greedy. I can't wait for that guy to come back. I don't know people hate him. That guy is the smartest man alive. That guy's getting paid so much money. To wrestle limited dates, and he did the smart way. I know people hate him, and yeah. people say, "Oh, he's a sucky wrestler," just because he doesn't do backflips and all that doesn't mean he sucks. That means like, that guy could legit kick your ass. He's a, he's just, again he's my Dan Severn and Ken Shamrock. Well, those guys yeah. too, like they don't have to do flips, and they'll still fuck you up. <laughs> so. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Uh, yeah. So. Um... I'm sorry. Did, did you did you mention a pick? Uh, your pick for G1? Or are you are you not sure? Oh no. You, uh, I, I'm okay. so sure. It's it's uh, to me it's just hard to choose. Uh, okay, yeah, well, that's fine. If if you can't choose, that's that's cool, man. Uh, but I'm I'm going with Ibushi. I'm going with Ibushi 100% this year. Um, but he's probably Ibushi's probably my my favorite. Re- oh, I'm sorry. He's my second favorite wrestler next to uh, Nick Sullivan. Uh, oh, cool. So <laughs> I, don't know, uh, I don't need to uh, piss three <laughs> people off in the same in the same interview in the same interview. <laughs> I love I love the work with him. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's. I mean, you said he turned down AEW. He also turned down the WWE. Uh, his heart is with New Japan. So oh I don't my think, god! Uh, when he had um, when he had the uh, Cruiserweight Classic match. Yeah. Because I remember Tyson. Tyson was in there. Uh, Tyson. Um, it was Tyson him that uh, yeah. Ibushi lost to. I think was it Brian Kendrick? I think he lost to. I believe so. Yeah. Oh my god. And I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, he's gonna probably sign, but then we turned him down. I think that, I think again, like that's the reason why he ended up putting Brian Kendrick over because he was a signing. Yeah. And the thing is, so like yeah. Abushi, he's not that big of a guy. I think him and I are the same height, but like he looks big just because how good of a shape he's in. But the guy doesn't age. Yeah. Either. No, he's. 
He's he's yeah, he's I think he's thirty nine years old. But he's yeah, uh, like thirty nine forty, I believe. Speaking of not aging, uh, Minoru Suzuki's in his fifties and the guy and that, that dude is uh he he, he uh, thinks he's like twenty five <laughs> the way the way he moves in the ring. But, uh, it's so uh, yeah. weird when you see a lot of these guys when they're younger and it feels like as the older they get, it feels like the better shape and and more more better of a wrestler they become. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right, cool. So I'll uh, I'll let you plug anything you want to plug. Uh, if you have any merchandise, um, social media, um, plug away, man. It's it's all yours. <clears throat> Obviously, you can find me on Facebook at uh, Nick Sullivan or Nick the Natural Sullivan. Off uh, my Twitter, it's uh, Nick the Natural Sullivan for Instagram. Nick the Natural Sullivan. I just again too, as we stated before, I just want stuff to go back to normal as possible. Just want everybody to be very safe. Happy and healthy. Follow the guidelines. There comes a uh, sanitizing, cleaning up. This, just, just we don't we we want this pandemic to be over as soon as possible. It sucks what happened. It's a very unfortunate events that occurred for these past couple months. But hopefully this brings people together and we have a very strong 2021. And I just want people to live and be happy and healthy and drama right, free. Man. And I'm 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 with you on that 100%, man. Uh, so Nick, man, I just want to say uh, thank you very much for joining me again today. And I I feel very fortunate because um, today I got to interview uh, two guys that aren't just professional wrestlers, but they're people I consider friends, uh, Kobe Christ and yourself. And uh, today was a good day, man. And I I want to again thank you so much. Uh, for coming on, and I know uh, it was a little bit of a challenge uh, hooking up together. Um, but hey, you and I, you and I are playing hey, that's, we're playing phone tag. <laughs> you know, that's okay. You know, we, we got uh, we both have families, we both have uh, uh, other lives. So, uh, but but we hooked up today, and uh, and I, I know I to, I know I told you this before, and I'll tell you again. You're extremely freaking talented, man. Uh, you're you. you're gonna go very far in professional wrestling, Impact Wrestling. Again, sign Nick Sullivan. Don't wait. You know he's going to the first promotion that that contacts him, and I hope it's Impact Wrestling. Uh, but for your sake, I Trust hope right, uh, it that. doesn't matter if it's Impact. It, but for your sake, it doesn't matter if it's Impact or Ring of Honor or MLW. Uh, somebody's going to contact you uh, sooner or later, and uh, you're going to be hugely successful uh, in the world of professional wrestling. But you know how I feel about you, man. And uh, thank you. And um, you're a good guy, and and I I think uh, I think I owe you a couple of hugs when I when I finally uh, when I finally I owe you, get to, I owe you a couple of bear hugs. Yeah, just as long as they don't turn into German suplexes, that's that's perfectly fine, man. <laughs> <laughs> but man, anytime, let, let's do this again real soon, man. I, I uh, you're always oh, welcome yeah, on the show. Definitely. All right, I tell you, after, after like your first, after you have your first match, uh, which I'm sure will be soon, we'll uh, we'll hook up again and uh, we'll we'll Hopefully talk about the first match. Hopefully it's in Canada. Yeah, no, if it's if it's in it's if it's in a four hour uh, uh, radius of me of of, dri- of me driving, I'll uh, I'll definitely come see it, man. But uh, yeah, definitely keep me posted on that, man. Oh yeah, we'll do. All right, cool, man, cool. And uh, again, thank you so much, and um, looking forward to doing this again soon, and and. Uh, and that's it, man. I'll say my goodbyes, and um, we'll uh, we'll probably talk about this uh, uh, in, in a few minutes anyway uh, right. on social media. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, I just want to say thank you, everybody, for listening today. Uh, this is Shooting Up North, uh, Indie Edition with Lewis Carlin. I um, want to thank again my guest, uh, Nick Sullivan, the natural Nick Sullivan. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye. <laughs>